Coming up on the breakfast, tables turn as Federal High Court in Oka affirms Soludo's uh, candidates as the All Progressives Grand Alliance for this year's Anambra State Governorship election. It is Idel Kabir, a time of sacrifice and celebration. There are complaints of increasing cost of rams and foodstuff. Also coming up is a review of today's papers as well as a look at two events that took place in history. You're welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this very beautiful Tuesday morning, the 20th of July 2021. The month is wrapping up speedily. Good yes, morning. it is. Just about 10 days left. And uh, good morning. I am Osaogi Ogmoa. But also, um, driving to work this morning, um, barely 10, 12 cars on the road. Uh, uh, and then I got it's to a public remember. holiday. <laughs> it's a public holiday, you know. So, Lagos is going to be a little calm this morning. Looking good news. To, yes. Um, we hope that the weather also stays the same way and everyone has a very, very interesting uh, day of rest. Um, as of course, as we celebrate uh, the Ida El Kabir celebrations. Mm. And talking about the Ida El Kabir celebrations, we know that it's one of the most important feasts in the Muslim calendar, the most important holiday. You know, it's marked, you know, by the slaughtering of rams and cows, and you know, families just get to enjoy. Even if you're not a Muslim, everybody gets to enjoy, you know, this period because you have friends who would mm -hmm. share with you, and you get to enjoy big. You know, big sizes of meats and, you know, you get food shared with you. It's just such a beautiful celebration, just like Christmas, you know, when we get to share with our Muslim brothers and sisters. But the sad thing is that this year, you know, many people are not smiling, especially traders and Nigerians who want to celebrate this period, you know, by going to buy these rams and cows in the market because the prices have skyrocketed. Oh my God, things are now so expensive. Um, there's even a report that um, in Katsina Ram markets, um, buyers have actually deserted there because of the high cost of you know cattle and livestock there. So we usually know that during this time of the year, it's something we experience, but it's I don't think it's been this bad. Maybe mm. we can attribute that to the insecurity one way or another, but I don't think it's been this bad in our history where the prices are so expensive. But nonetheless, people still make a way. I mean, in my state this morning, as I was coming out, there was a ram, a cow, just a cattle on every, you know, every um, gate, every door. There's just, you know, a Muslim family who would tie two rams, three rams, two cows. And it's just exciting to see, you know, um, that. But the sad thing is that there are lots of people who could not afford to get those because of the cost this period. Yeah, well, um, inflation, yeah, I think we had br brought this up you know, weeks ago, months ago, you know, about how inflation will affect, uh, you know, the price of goods and uh, people's ability and uh, to spend and to afford, you know, food items. So it's one of the, you know, reasons. And of course, you know, the fact that, you know, generally across the whole country, food stuff, you know, everything yes. you know, seems to have um, almost doubled in, in price. Um, unfortunately, of course, the RAM is a very important uh, detail, you know, when celebrating Salah. So people would have to figure out ways that they can buy, you know, some meat. If you can buy a cow, you know, buy a ram. If you can buy a big ram, buy a small one. Um, and then there's also, I think, you know, I, I'm not sure if they do it with rams, but it's just an, um, an option. I know that there's people who, or committees who come together, you know, and then, you know, 10 people share, mm -hmm. you know, a ram. So if you can buy a full one, you know, you can partner Bulk with, bind exactly, or save, yes. partner with, you know, five, six people and you guys can share one ram, you know, if it is just to celebrate, you know, the the um, you know, the moment, and of course, get some ram meat in your in your uh, food. Yes, so we do have a report. Um, one of our correspondents um, did a survey to find out exactly what it was like in the market, and what we saw in the news was that you know people who trade in these livestock said that last year they were selling a ram or, or for 200,000 era and lesser but now it's way over that 230,000 era and more but let's uh, take a, a listen really big one. yes let's take a listen to um, what people are saying in the country in few hours muslims all over the world will celebrate idil kabir Rams are an essential part of the festival, and you will see a lot of them in markets around Lagos. 
but the turnout of buyers are lower than what ram sellers were expecting. The secretary of the Bagada Ram market believes it has to do with the prices. Hazan Idris says buyers are unhappy with the high prices, which he blames on the economy and the security situation in northern Nigeria. The ram of 30,000 we last, last year is now about almost 50 to 60,000 era. And the people are not happy. And the, you see this Ilaya festival is a, layer that is a festival that people want to show their happiness. But uh, gradually people are patronizing, but uh, compared to last year, the turnout is totally low. Okay. Idris isn't wrong. Potential buyers are complaining of high prices. Despite that, these Muslim faithful are ready to celebrate the festival. The ram is too costly. I price two one fifty. I price the big one two fifty. Two. The man I'm no agree. So I'm going back to my house now. I'm not happy about it. Too. It's too cost. The person pass in boundary. The person go weak. So as my hand be, now I want to buy it. I am happy because of the um, mood of the season. Um, Edo Aha. But it's um, disappointing how rams are so um, highly priced. But I understand because of the um, insecurity in the country. Most sellers, they claimed that they were the, the ones they bought right from the, from the places where they bought them. They are expensive before they get here. So they are to sell what they bought. So it was expensive last year also. But this year, it was quite uh, highly expensive than that of last year. If you look around, you'll discover there's a low turnout of buyers this year compared to the previous years. And this is due to the high cost of RAM in the market. Ngozika Ohai Chesi, reporting for Plus TV Africa. Well, we absolutely wish uh, all our Muslim faithful across the country and, of course, uh, across Africa, um, happy um, uh, celebrations this period. Yes. You know? And like we said, celebrate in the best way that you can, all right? If you can't afford a, you know, a ram for 150000 or for 200000 you know, maybe you can crowd, you know, buy one. But isn't uh, it a bit too late? I mean, do you even think the markets will open today? Today's like... Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure there so. would still be... There definitely will be mm. some person who but wants to But then you would have sell. to, you know, dole out much more cash because obviously they would want to overprice those items. But anyway, um, let's move on to our next top trending story, and it's about sports. Well, the Court of Arbitration for Sports, CAS, has rejected the bid of two Nigerian-American players, uh, female basketball players, to play for Nigeria at the Tokyo Games. Now, the reason given is that they have played for the U.S. national team for a long time, and their names are Eneka Ogumike and Elizabeth Williams. So they, you know, argued that this is unfair, that, you know, they have dual citizenship. They are Nigerian and they are American, but that they would love to play for their country. But the sad thing is that, you know, um, according to the rules, once once you've gotten to um, age 17, once you turn 17 and you're already playing um, for the U.S. basketball team in the U.S., you will not be allowed to play for any other country. So that's just the challenge they're having now. They've appealed this, but the appeal was denied. But I don't know, what do you, what do you think impact this would be, um, and, you know, regarding the Olympic Games? The fact that there's, there'll be no Nigerian, I think that's a story I saw, that it would actually be um, no um, Nigerian competing for that and that actually no African nation has won a game in the Olympics since Nigeria went in 1-5 in Athens in 2004. Um, well, I think, you know, I'll probably just, you know, stick with the basketball angle. The, um, it, it's, it's interesting times, you know, with regards to Nigerian sports. Um, for a very, very long time, we've not really had any focus on basketball until, you know, currently. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first time in, a very, in maybe a decade that we've had any major focus and expectations, you know, with the Nigerian basketball team, both the male and the female uh, contingent. So um, I'm, I'm happy about that, first of all. I'm, you know, I'm excited that we at least have something to look forward to. We may not win it. We may not, you know, win any of the medals, but at least 
um, it would be um, a good thing that Nigerians can look, you know, at basketball. We can focus our attention on basketball and, um, you know, cheer them on and see how far we can go. Sad for the two of them, you know, that you mentioned that we will not be able to play for Nigeria. I'm hoping that there's uh, certain replacements that will be able to take over their positions and do exceptionally well also. And um, also the rules are the rules. If you've played for a different country, you cannot you know, change, you know, a nationality, you know, and uh, decide to, you're going to play for a different country uh, two years later. And what if happens if the Nigerian basketball team doesn't do well? Are you going to go back to the USA team? I'm not sure. So, um, so loyalty rules are rules. is a big factor here then. Yeah, you know, and most importantly, the rules are the rules. And you really can't do much about it. They can't bend the rules simply because of one part, uh, particular person. Same thing happened with the um, athlete who um, got disqualified for doping for um, uh, marijuana. Um, no matter how the you know many people were you know felt bad about it and cried and you know wailed, the rules are the rules and that's that's the way it works. So hopefully the Nigerian female basketball team will be able to um, you know find very very competent replacements and they will be able to do very very well. I, I feel like and I wish and I hope that Nigerians across the whole country and in diaspora will fully support their basketball teams, um, you know, 100% this time. And let's see how far they can really, mm. really go and make Nigeria proud. I Super Eagles have not given us that level of excitement in a very, very long time. Mm. So let's see what, what a basketball might be better. Yeah, I think one good news regarding replacements is that um, Neka's younger sister, uh, Chini Ogumike, has been permitted to actually play for Nigeria. So good one. We're looking forward to it. Absolutely. We, we absolutely wish them the best. And uh, I want to see where this, where this leads. If we can now, maybe now... You know, um, 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 putting more effort, more funding, more support um, in every single direction towards basketball. Mm. Um, it might just be, you know, the next big thing in Nigeria. Um, sure. And also help us remember that, you know, our football seems to be seems to be fading hmm. um you know uh, but regarding the tokyo games I, i'm really looking forward to seeing what the organizers would say because you know that an athlete um tested positive for covid19 uh an american teenager competing in the tokyo games um this was confirmed yesterday so we still don't know if they will hold off and what steps you know the organizing committee of the tokyo olympics would do to prevent for the spread to other athletes in the games village um but that's it for you today on top trending thank you very much for starting your beautiful Tuesday morning with us. We'll take a break here and return with Off the Press.